Thank you, Chairman Esposito, Vice Chairman Dave, members of the county board, elected officials, distinguished guests, and the citizens of Kenosha County. Every day is a great day in Kenosha County, and this past year has been nothing but great. Equalized value has gone up above projections. The tax base is larger in some measure because of the work we've done together to increase economic development possibilities. We are seeing the infrastructure we built continue to pay off by attracting new companies to our area. Anybody who wants a job can get one. As a result, when the citizens of Kenosha County look at their upcoming tax bill for Kenosha County purposes, they will see a decrease in the actual cash out of pocket. Yes, taxes are going down in 2019. <laughs> taxes on a home valued at $200,000 will decrease by $8.26. Wallets will be fuller and the budget meets the needs of our community. What's in the budget is a result of all the work you do in your committees. The citizen boards, the other elected officials that interact with us, comments from the residents in our community, and a few unfunded state mandates. This budget is also the result of deep analysis and review. What's the return on investment? What is in the best interest of Kenosha County in the long haul? And many, many budget requests did end up on the cutting room floor. In many respects, this is a maintenance budget that sustains essential operations and builds on our long-range successes in economic development and infrastructure. Before I get into the details, there are a few people I want to recognize. Bob Riedel, Human Resources Director for Kenosha County for 20 years. Bob loves Kenosha County and the people who work here. Bob has been a strong and fair advocate for employees, as well as a good representative for the administration, and he's provided an excellent balance. Whether it was in contract negotiations or helping the best find the best solutions for, for all of us after the post-Act 10 world, Bob led the way with a positive attitude and a calm smile. <laughs> Bob, we're going to miss that smile in your lap. We are. He's good. He was the consummate. Pro he is the consummate professional, but he's looking forward to spending more time with his grandchildren and hopefully watching the Badgers, the Packers, and the National League Central champion Brewers win <laughs> national titles. <laughs> Bob will retire at the end of this year. Succession planning has been key uh, to the whole process to pass along the institutional knowledge and ease transition. Bob was generous to us to stay on as his successor, Clara Tappa. Her appointment is on your agenda tonight. She has big shoes to fill. Thank you, Bob Riedel.
working with her successor, Tammy Capito, to ease the transition. Thank you, Lori, and we wish you the best on your new chapter, Mrs. Lori Orendorf. <laughs> Reduced. Our social workers help children reach permanent homes, 
more quickly and keep them safe, reducing the number of children having to live in foster care. This budget gives an additional help to veteran services to improve communication with our veterans and their families as they continue to increase outreach to veterans across our county. They have also extended hours in Salem Lakes and at the Sharing Center. And there will be a veterans event at the Job Center on November 3rd, and I'm sure you'll be getting information on that very soon. This budget provides funds to the Shalom Center to assist them addressing the chronically homeless population. This budget continues the support of the Sharing Center, the Twin Lakes Food Pantry, and Women's and Children's Horizon. This budget adds depth to the behavioral health services staff. Over the past 10 years, our behavioral health services have grown by 85%. Calls to our crisis center continue to increase, and we don't expect that to decline. And as you know, in the past two years, we have secured five new grants to address mental health shortages and the opioid crisis. This budget provides additional funding to the Bridges Program, a center that assists people with behavioral and mental health issues. This budget increases beds at the care center to provide more opportunities for people in behavioral health and crisis situations. This has a direct impact on our keeping our state institutional costs down. This budget upgrades some testing equipment in the health department lab to allow for faster and better drug and alcohol analysis to help law enforcement, the courts, and of course the general public. This budget makes a change in the drug formulary for Kenosha County employees that will result in a $300,000 to $500,000 savings while still providing their medication and the services they need. This budget provides the county's portion of the funding to replace the 911 radio consult system is now at the end of its useful life. Hopefully it waits until the budget passes and then we can get the new one. <laughs> uh, the mayor and I, along with the Joint Services Board, uh, know that this is a critical system. It allows dis dispatchers to broadcast to receive radio calls and transmissions from law enforcement and the EMS and the firefighters in the field and activates the emergency outdoor warning system. This budget also develops a robust simulcast system by adding two communication towers and radio equipment. This address the, addresses the communication gaps for law enforcement, fire, and rescue services. When it is completed, it will provide the level of coverage consistent with the federal targets of 95% of the community's area, area covered 95% of the time. Special thanks go to all the local fire chiefs in our county and Ray Arbor for his extensive work on this critical public safety project. This budget continues our effort to try to catch up still from the previous administration more than a decade ago delaying purchases of highway equipment. Highway division mechanics do an excellent job of keeping the trucks rolling on the road or keeping them in use but there comes a time when you need to, need to replace your equipment. This budget will also upgrade and transition our job center to better provide training in the gig economy to better acclimate individuals with technology and job apps that are in place but are underutilized. The goal is to match people's skill sets to increase the overall wages of their families. We need to be more proactive, whether it's someone looking for their first job or someone who has had their job for years and just wants more. The budget, the budget before you tonight, studies what it will take to bring the ceremonial courtroom in the historic courthouse back to its original beauty. We believe we can get historic preservation grants for some of that restoration work. It's a shame the 1920s murals have been hidden beneath the drop ceiling Judge Bruce Schrader, who occupies that courtroom, is pleased we're looking at it. So is 
Chief Judge Rossell, and of course our own Mary Kay Wagner, right here, our judge is here tonight to join us. This, bu this budget strengthens our cybersecurity and overall IT infrastructure from threats both foreign and domestic. It makes enhancements to critical business applications, including the very successful delinquent tax application that was introduced last year. This budget continues the bike trail signage project that has been several years in the planning, and it was awarded a significant state grant. Recently, I met with other county executives and administrators in La Crosse, and I can tell you they're envious of our economic development boom. And now is not the time to put on the brakes. These economic achievements are a direct result of our focused attention to the county highways and infrastructure. Significant quality development is knocking at our door and we don't want to let it drive past. The most significant part of this budget is infrastructure. This budget lives up to our commitment to the state of Wisconsin, which is investing 30 to $40 million to expand County Trunk KR from I-94 to Old Green Bay Road. Our commitment was $3.3 million, and this board supported that proposal last year. Other road projects include County Trunk Highway K. Many of you drive into the city on K, and you can see the rural profile is not keeping up and adequate for current traffic. In working with the mayor, the city of Kenosha will expand the road to four lanes between the two sets of railroad track, right near their industrial park where they're going to have a tip. The county will complete it to the intersection west going west to H. We'll finish the intersection and at that point it will be jurisdictionally transferred back to the city all the way back east. County Trunk Highway S, acquisition of right of way and design work continue on that, and this will get done in 2019 project cycle for the acquisition of the property. We continue our usual paving projects as well, and I'm happy to report tonight that in 2018, we paved over 18 miles of County Trunk Road, which is a lot of road. <laughs> I urge all of you to support the strong infrastructure development for Kenosha County. Staying ahead of the curve secures the future of our jobs and the safety of our community. In 2019, Kenosha County taxes are going down. They're about the same as they were back in 2015. This budget employs best practices to lay a solid foundation for the future growth and stability of our community. This budget addresses the needs of our community for the most vulnerable, including strengthening our mental health services, and it provides for the needs of the law enforcement, public works, and the courts. And again, it does that with all lowering county taxes. I look forward to working with each and every one of you as we review the 2019 Kenosha County budget. I believe this budget serves our community well, and it will create a, and cements a solid foundation for the future. May God bless America, and may God bless Kenosha County. Thank you.